Hello, Veteran0121 here. Welcome back. This is another episode of Final Fantasy IV. In the last episode, we went through the majority of the waterway, the Dam Cyan waterway. And now, in this episode, we're going to be taking on the Octo Mammoth. And the beast stands no chance with a Dark Knight, a Summoner, and a Sage. Although Rydia is afraid. That's alright, Rydia. It'll be alright. It'll be all right, Rydia. I mean, shit. We got Tella with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain that we can't get into encounters in that part right there. Not yet. Let's let's make sure here. I'm yeah, I'm, I don't think there's anything over here, but who knows? I'm always curious to find out, you know, if there's anything that I can find that I maybe never knew about before for this version of the game. I mean who knows, right? All right, so we're in the B2 area, and, uh, yeah, apparently this place gets frequented by men, but... I mean, fuck. With all the monsters in here, you'd think that most men would stay the fuck away. All right, these are red moose enemies. These guys are weak to fire. They are red, therefore they are weak to fire. There's a similar enemy in the uh, in the antlions den called the yellow moose, weak to lightning. They're basically color coded. Yeah, I did not want to do that against just one of them there. That was, an, that was a complete accident. Yeah, look at that. 500 damage. Wow. That's quite a bit, wouldn't you say? Hades gloves and alligators. That's right, we gotta take on alligators. These guys are also weak to ice. And yeah, again, Cecil is looking like the weak link here, man. <laughs> he really is. I <laughs> mean, fuck. Ready to learn the raise and the stop spell. Two very good spells. Alright, so let's equip this shit. Got a Hades helm. Yeah, it's pretty negligible as far as uh, the upgrades here. Better than a sharp stick in the eye.
damn, man. I forgot about that with zombies. Yeah, they resist ice damage. Yeah, these alligators, I believe they can drop uh, silver apples. Unless I'm very much mistaken, but I don't think I am. Yeah, it's like an ultra rare drop, though, so you're probably not going to get one. Hermes sandals. Yeah, if I didn't mention before, Hermes sandals uh, that will cast the uh, the haste spell. Pretty useful, actually. And yeah, speaking of the fire spell, uh, you may have noticed up until this point, Rydia. does not know the fire spell. So yeah, if you hadn't played this game before, you might be wondering why that is, but yeah, it's, it's part of the plot, essentially. I can't get through one fucking encounter with these damn zombies without Rydia getting poisoned. She gets poisoned every one of these fucking zombie battles. Every single one. It's a good thing I got plenty of those. Yeah, Zeus's Wraths, man. You want to hold on to those. Like, again, like I said, do not use those on, like, you know, regular encounters. I'm telling you. Save them. All right, so how much MP is the Blink spell? 10 MP? That should hopefully be enough. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to probably want Blink for this fight coming up here. Now this is the Octo Mammoth. This guy has about 3,300 HP. This guy's weak to lightning and darkness. But yeah, you want to get blink on your characters because uh, when this guy gets low on HP, he starts to hit really hard. I mean, and I mean really hard. Uh, I'm just gonna use Rydia to keep our HP up here.
Yeah, it's also good to get like a rod in there every now and then to uh, do a little damage with mage arrows. Because again, it's well, actually, it's not. I guess it isn't the greatest. Maybe it isn't that good. Excellent. The beast is weakening. Yeah, I gotta get a cure on him. Just in case. Because uh, you might just wallop him here if I don't get a, a blink spell up on him. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, normally the blink uh, spell cannot be um, multi-targeted. Oh. Shit. Oof. Yeah, as you can see, he hits really hard. Very hard. Ow. Yeah, this guy's pretty much toast now. He's pretty much done. You are a done deal, sir. Or at least you will be. Yeah. The blink spell is your friend in that fight. I wouldn't even bother with lightning spells, to be honest. farther shit man so yeah that was the red wings that did that Alright, so welcome to Damsign Castle, or at least what the hell is left with it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to unequip all of Tella's gear. Uh, he's going to join later on, and he's going to actually uh, be equipped with gear later on. So, yeah, don't worry about that. We might as well just take his gear uh, and equip it on other characters. Like, uh, like shit, I could give Rydia the Gaia gear. And, yeah, she can keep her silver armlet, I suppose. But, yeah, you want to come over this way because, yeah. Whoop! Secret doorway or secret passage, kind of. Alright, so that guy dies. He tells us, go ahead, take whatever you want. Doesn't matter, we're all dead anyways. But yeah, here's kind of a secret stairway, and this is the damn Cyan Castle Dungeons. You get a potion, antidote, eye drops, gold needle, phoenix down, and an ether. So yeah, a lot of good stuff down here, but wait. 
Are we done yet? No, sir. Are we getting elixir? And we also get holy arrows. Uh, we'll be able to get... Oh, yeah, and iron arrows, too, I guess. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff. But wait. We still aren't done. Power bow and feathered cat and a ruby ring. Now ruby rings are actually really good because what they do. Well, let's take a look at it. Well, it's not better than a silver armlet as far as like um, stats and whatnot. Uh, like the defense fort is pretty shit. Uh, but the good thing about the ruby ring is it will protect you from the pig status. And it's non-metallic. That's another thing in its favor that it's got over like the silver armlet and the iron armlet and cursed rings and all that kind of shit. Non-metallic. So never don't never sell your ruby rings. Or at least well, I shouldn't say never. At some at at a certain point in the game, they will become worthless, kind of, but, uh, yeah, right now, hold on to them if you get ruby rings. You do not want to sell them. Yeah, man, we got all these dead people. Utterly devastated, man. That Baron is stealing crystals. But how do they steal the crystals so fast? And did they steal the crystal before they bombed the place? Or how does that work? I mean, how did they take it? I mean, because it seemed like they just came through and just bombed the place real quick. And that was it. Healing urns, huh? Yeah, there's a girl over there. We're gonna heal up real quick here. Yeah, that will restore your HP and status. So if you had any KO'd characters or toted characters, it'll it'll heal them up. And over here, you get your MP restored. I don't understand why they don't just have one big urn that does everything, but hey. I'm not going to complain. Uh oh. I sent some spoony bard rage. Haha. <laughs> You spoony! Thankfully, they put that line back in, man. I remember playing a fan translation of this game, or it was a certain—I I can't remember exactly like what it was. I think it was like it was a fan translation, but they were like they were still in the process of. Uh, of doing a lot of the dialogue, and they actually took out the you spoony bard part in the, in the script here, which uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people complained about. 
I know, I know, I well, I didn't directly, but I would have. <laughs> Like, no, man, you don't take out, you spoony bard. That's gotta be in there. That's like one of the most classic lines in video game history. Oh, Anna. There's life left in you yet. Father, Edward, he is the Prince of Dampsian. His name is Spoonie. He disguised himself as a bard to avoid attention. Wait, what? That doesn't make sense. Forgive me, Father, for running off with him. Edward, I'm in love with him, Father. But I could not stay without my father's blessing. I was about to return when... The Red Wings laid siege to us, led by a man named Golbez. Golbez? Yes. A figure clad in armor of deepest night, his strength beyond that of mortal man. And the Red Wings' purpose? Our crystal. And then they rained fire upon us. I lost my mother and father. Then Anna tried to shield me from their arrows. You love this man that much? Father, please, forgive me. I was so... so... Ish. Edward, I love you. Anna. 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 This Gomez, tell me more of him. I've heard he came to Baron only recently. It seems he's using the Red Wings to steal crystals. Tears do not bring back the dead, boy. Anna's death must be avenged. I'll find this gold bears. Tella, not alone. She was not your daughter. Her killer will die by my hand. <gasps> Anna. <gasps> Coward. You're a man, aren't you? A grown man. Stop crying. I have. Rydia, you're right. I'm nothing but a coward, just as you say. That's why I'm just going to stay at Anna's side. It doesn't matter anymore. Nothing does. You're not the only one who's grieving. Anna would not wish to see you fawning like a fool. Please, I've desperate need of your help right now. But how could I help you? My name is Cecil. A friend of mine has taken ill with desert fever in Kaipo and needs a sand pearl if she is to live. And for that, I've need of your aid. You need... my aid? I do. Rosa's life depends on it. I beg you. This woman you speak of, she means a great deal to you, doesn't she? As Anna did. As Anna did to me. In a cave far to the east dwells a monstrous creature known as an antlion. The pearls you seek form from the fluid the beast secretes as it lays its eggs in the sand. There is no overland route to its den. We must cross the northern shoals to get there. A hovercraft is docked here. With it we can reach the creature's cave. It can bear us across the surf to Kaipo as well. Come. We must hurry. So Prince Spoonie of Dam Cyan has joined our party. Oh dear. Farewell. Oh dear. My love. The great sage Tal leaves and are his replacement is a spoony bard. A guy who thought that he wasn't going to attract atten attention by uh, by becoming a bard. Which makes no sense. That's right. He was trying to stay incognito by making himself a bard. Anyways, Spoonie can attack, he can hide to avoid being attacked. He automatically does this when he's in critical. He has a, the, sal the, uh, the salve ability, which basically takes uh, an item like, like a potion and uh, he'll use it on the entire party, but like the, uh, the potion will actually be split among the parties. So, um, 
so yeah, I don't know. It's not really good with potions, but like with Phoenix Stones, I guess it's pretty good because you can use that to bring everybody back. And then he has Bard Song, which uh, in the 2D versions of the game was absolute bullshit. Uh, the Sync Command in Final Fantasy IV 2D versions was absolute crap, but uh, now it's actually alright. He can put enemies to sleep, he can confuse enemies, and he can put silence on them. And uh, as he levels up, he'll learn more uh, different. He'll learn more songs and shit. So he's a little bit better in this version of the game, but he still, for the most part, sucks. Uh, yeah, he comes equipped with a dream harp that can inflict sleep on a target. Uh, he's got a feathered cat. Uh, he comes with a ruby ring, so you can actually uh, unequip this from him if you want to. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing that later. Uh, yeah, the game doesn't tell you here, but the Bard's Tunic actually protects you against the silence status. Interestingly enough, which is kind of weird considering that Spoonie doesn't use magic. So why the hell would they make it so the Bard's Tunic protects you against silence? I don't know, man. It's pretty shitty uh, clothing, but it does have that going for it, I guess. Anyways, what do you got to say? Yeah, we gotta go to the antlions then. See, so, yeah, I mean, we're in a medieval society, but yet they're advanced enough to make hovercrafts. That's pretty fucking impressive, huh? Yeah, man, it can fly over water. And we can use it to go back to Kaipo. Just like that, we're on the other side again. Yeah, I'm just... I couldn't remember if there was... I didn't think so. I, I was just making sure, man. <laughs> there wasn't like a chokeable forest on the southern part of the desert there. But yeah, this, uh, this cave... The antlion cave is actually much, much shorter than the uh, the other one that we were just in. All right, so let's go. Antlion's Den B1. Alright, so we have a new enemy here, an Adamant Toys. This guy is weak to ice. So bring out your ice rods. And your ice spells. Your dark swords. And apparently they can drop echo herbs, which is kind of nice. Oh, 
Alright, so we got another new enemy in this fight, a Dome of Boy. I do believe these guys can also drop uh, the Goblin Summon as, uh, as the rare drop. Alright, Spoonie learned Life's Anthem. That, that'll basically, uh, when he performs that song, it'll basically, uh, gives the party regen, more or less. Which isn't too bad. Chad, it takes him forever to charge up the song. But once he does, uh, you pretty much just sit here and just let... Oh, yeah, and if he, uh, if he gets attacked while he's performing the song, uh, yeah, it'll pretty much stop doing what he's doing. Which is garbage. Yeah, I don't like that about Bard's song. Yeah, if he gets attacked... He'll stop using it. Otherwise, if you can keep the bad guys off of Spoonie when he's doing his fucking songs, then uh, it's not bad. I mean, look at, how, look at how weak that fucking attack is. I think it's weaker than it, than it even was in the, uh, the SNES, the Dream Harp there. Yeah, his harps are pretty crap, man.
Alright, so we get a Lamia harp. This is a better harp for Spoony. Yeah, this one uh, inflicts Confuse. Still sucks, though. Alright, new enemy here. This is a Leshy. Antarctic Wind is basically the the, uh, the ice spell. And oh, look at this! We got some yellow jellies. This guy's a weak to lightning. Too bad I don't have a lightning rod. Unless I'd use that on them. But yeah, these guys can drop rainbow pudding just like the red moose or flan enemies in the previous dungeon. And uh, you can actually just, this is probably a good area to fight around and uh, try to farm for that stuff. I don't know, there's actually an easier way to do it later on in the game. Once you get the uh, treasure hunter augment, uh, there's an enemy called a flan princess you can fight. Uh, that actually drops it more often, and whoa, Spoony, whoa. You're getting spanked already, buddy. Oh. Spoony? I'm telling you, see, that's... He gets spanked like he does in the, uh... In the other versions of the game. Good thing I got the race spell, huh? Come on, Spoonie. Get your ass up. Yeah, and for some weird fucking reason, uh, we get a second Shadow Blade. I guess maybe the game designers thought you could have missed the one in the previous dungeon, because yeah, this treasure does not exist in the 2D uh, version, or yeah, it doesn't exist in the 2D versions of the game. You don't get two Shadow Blades. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why they thought it was a good idea to give you another one here. But that's what they do. Inexplicably. I guess you could sell it. And, yeah, I guess maybe they thought that you would have missed the Ice Rod in the previous dungeon, too, so... They give you another one here. Yeah. I don't know, man. Pretty strange, if you ask me.
So yeah, the enemies in here are markedly easier than the uh, than the ones in the previous dungeon. The ones in the previous dungeon were annoying as fuck because they can put Toad on you, they can um, poison you and shit, you know, all those fucking zombies. So yeah, it's nasty stuff. And oh yeah, we can get more crap in here. Phoenix Downs are nice. Exits are nice. Ethers are pretty nice too. Yes, sirree. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother saving. No need. We're good. I was hoping for a rainbow pudding there, man. Just give me a rainbow pudding, damn it. That'd be so nice. Not having to farm for that shit. All I need is one. Yeah, spider silk, those are pretty good. Uh, allows you to put slow on the target. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to get. So we're good to go. Yeah, this area here, uh, yeah, it's already filled out. And there, I don't think there's any treasure to find either. Ooh. Ooh, new enemy, Basilisk. Yeah, that's one thing you can do with Spoonie, is you can, uh, you know, kill all the enemies with one enemy and then just fucking use Life's Anthem until your HP is full and then finish off the last enemy. That's probably the best way to use Life's Anthem, that way you don't have to waste magic points healing your, sh your shit in between battles. Shows how much you know, Spoonie. Doesn't look too docile to me. But yeah, this is the ant lion. This guy is weak to ice.
so yeah, you don't use magic on him when his eyes are red. Now you want to use physical attacks. Yeah, when he's when his eyes turn white again, use the ice rod. Yeah, this guy's easy, man. He's not hard. Real easy. Yeah, they turn red, use physical attacks. Oops. Yeah, every now and then he'll get in a counter. Which actually does a lot of damage. But that's okay. It's alright, Cecil can handle it. We got him. Yeah. Pretty easy boss. Two levels for Spoonie, wow. There you go. Why would it try to harm us? I don't know, look at him. Did he look harmless to you? So can we use the uh, the warp spell here? Okay, yeah, that's just gonna be like it's just gonna be annoying. I'm just gonna use my um, emergency exit to get the fuck out of here. Cause I don't have to, I don't yeah I didn't feel like walking out. Alright, so we're back at Kaipo, and I think I'm going to save the uh, following events for the next episode. This is Veteran0121. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.